Hello everybody, and welcome to another Game Salad tutorial. Recently, um, Game Salad updated their application, and it now supports um, GamePad controls, specifically for the Amazon Fire TV. And I assume it'll support. It'll be coming, you know, for things like the Android Nexus TV and things like that soon. But for now, to kind of kick this off, they're offering $1,000 in prizes. And for every app you publish to the Amazon Fire TV, you get a free month of Pro. So, it's pretty great. Um, so, in this tutorial, I'll just be showing you how to, to convert your apps or make a new app that is compatible with the Amazon Fire TV because it can be a little confusing. So, to start off, for your platform, the best is 720p HD because it has that same 16 by 9 ratio, and it'll say that. And you can convert it from, like, say if you had an app in, like, you know, something else. You can convert it, but we'll just stick with 720p. And so, with the new game sound, when you go into a scene here, and attributes, you'll notice they already have these player one key maps. And so you can create multiplayer apps in this. And maybe we can save that for another tutorial, but um but for these they have all these controls. And we'll get to that later. What we really want is in devices, players and usually you'll just be using player one unless you're doing a multiplayer game. And they just have true or false boolean attributes for all these buttons. Unless it's the left and right joysticks because those um, obviously aren't just true or false. These go from zero to one. So say if it's the left stick, um, if, you, if it's the left stick X, if you say if it's greater than zero, you'll be saying that the, they're pushing the X in the right direction, or pushing the joysticks to the right. And if it's Y is greater than one, they're pushing it up, and negative one, pushing it down. So you get the idea. Um, so let's just do a little example. Create a new actor, and so let's just say create a rule. And we'll say when the right key is pressed, then we'll just have this guy move right, move to the right, whatever speed. So, and you'll notice I just put keyboard. Now, if you wanted to say if the keyboard or the game controller, you can click any, click this, go to attribute, so it's not actually like a key, like like a touch or a key would be, but you go into the attribute devices, players, whichever player it is, player one, and you could say, we'll just do the d-pad, d-pad right is true, then do this, but there's an even easier way to do this, which is you can map your gamepad controls to the keyboard. So if you already have a if you already have a game that uses keyboard controls, all you have to do is say, okay, when I have this right key, just go into your scene and you can map this. That's what these are for. Player one key map. So you'd say, I want the D pad right to be mapped to the right key. And you just do the name of the key. So it'd be space a whatever the key name is right key so now this will work when I press the right key and I don't even need this if we press the right key it'll work with the keyboard or with a gamepad when it's mapped to the right it will move to the right using the D-pad control, since I mapped the D-pad to the right key. Um, and let's copy this for all 
directions. So then we can go into the scene, go to the attributes, and map these keys. So we got the div at left, down, and up. And we'll place this actor in our scene. And obviously we can just move him around. My up and down isn't working for some reason. So, let's see what I did wrong. So I have the up and the up here. Forgot to change that. My bad. So now you can move this in all directions. And already you have a little game-like thing that will work on the Amazon Fire TV and other console controllers. And to test this, if you don't have a Fire TV, you can either side load this to the Fire TV or to test this on your Mac. Just if you have a Bluetooth gamepad controller like PS3, Xbox, or any Bluetooth controller, you can connect it to your Mac and you can test this out. So that's pretty cool. And that'll work for all your buttons. And the next thing that gets most people confused whoops, is scene changes. So we'll just call this scene changer. No, it doesn't matter. I'm retarded. Okay, so what you gotta do to change a scene is create an attribute in the actor. Just a boolean works fine. You can call this pressed or change whatever you want. So you say create a rule that says when the key will say space and you can map the space key to your like A button or something like that. It is down. Then you're going to want to change the attribute pressed to true. And then so you don't actually say when the key space is pressed, change the scene. You change this attribute first, then create another rule that says when that pressed is true, when the button's pressed, then this is the best way I've found that works the best change. You're going to change this back to false so that you can keep pressing this button. And we'll have a timer says after 0.1 seconds run to completion change the scene to the next scene I didn't add a scene yet but so then while we go into the home go to the home scenes And we'll add this scene changer in here. And this is pretty much the only way that you can change this scene. So I press space and it changes the scene. Um, another thing you might want to know is this D pad um, works for the game control, game pad controller for Fire TV, and is also the round buttons around the um, just the normal TV controller. Um, the button A is the center button and the start button is the menu button on the normal controller and then everything else is normal. The other buttons just don't exist on the normal controller so you'll have to adjust if you want to use the normal Fire TV controller. And that's about all this um, I hope you enjoyed it. So that's how you create apps that will be compatible 
for the gamepad or for the Fire TV. And for now, publishing to the Fire TV is free. And if you have any questions about that, you can just leave a comment below in the comments. Um, I wanted to show you guys this official website of the YouTube channel. And it just has polls and stuff. I've been asking what tutorial series I should do next. Looks like I'll do Stick Hero, but there's only been a couple votes because I haven't really said anything about this website yet. And you can also see the apps that I've made. I've already published a few, so you can check that out. And thanks for watching.